We've put the code in place to handle the player's input so that they can fire a missile every time they press the A button. But we haven't defined what firing a missile really means yet. We haven't made the fire missile method. It's time to do that now. A logical place to add this method would be around the update method. So head to the update method and go down to the bottom of it, past the ending right curly brace. The method selector will gray out once you're outside the method. Add a couple new lines and then add the following code. Void fire missile. For each game object missile in missiles. We start the method by using a for each loop. This goes through each of the game objects in the missiles array. The current game object in the array that we'll be looking at in the loop is called missile. Inside that for each loop, add the following code. If not missile dot alive, missile dot velocity equals get missile muzzle velocity. Missile dot position equals get missile muzzle position. Missile dot rotation equals missile launcher head dot rotation. Missile dot alive equals true. Break. This if statement checks if the current array element missile is not alive. If it's not alive, we'll resurrect it and make it the missile that will be fired. To fire the missile, we set a velocity, a position, and a rotation, and then set it to alive so it will be updated and move and draw on the screen. You'll notice we're calling a few more methods we haven't written yet. Get missile muzzle velocity and get missile muzzle position. There's some math in those methods, so for readability's sake, it makes sense to break them out into methods. We'll write those in a moment. As far as this method goes, we're done. Close this off with two more right curly braces. That'll close the for each loop and the method. Now, for those two math methods. First, we need to establish a few more variables. So head up to your top of your Game 1 CS file. Below your declarations of previous gamepad state and previous keyboard state, add these two lines. Const float launcher head muzzle offset equals 20.0 f. Const float missile power equals 20.0 f. These are two constant floating point variables that define how far away from the center of the launcher head missiles should start, and how fast the missiles should fly. They're set to const so we don't accidentally modify them, though having missiles that fire faster, depending on power-ups or other game factors, sounds like a neat way to modify the game later. How do we know the offset value? The value comes from knowing the size and structure of our launcher head model. A differently shaped model would likely have a different value, depending on how far away from the center of the model the front is. Alright, head back down to your fire missile method. Go down to the bottom of the fire missile method, past the last right curly brace. We're going to add these additional methods. Add this code after the fire missile method. Vector 3. Get Missile Muzzle Velocity. Matrix Rotation Matrix equals Matrix dot create from yaw pitch roll. Missile Launcher Head dot rotation dot y. Missile Launcher Head dot rotation dot x zero. We've started our new method. Notice that we didn't start this method with void like the other methods. That's because this method returns an actual value. Think of a method as having inputs, the arguments that we pass a lot of methods, and optionally having one output, a value that can come back from the method when you call it. 
This can be very handy, especially when you can chain methods together, where the output from one becomes the input in another.